Today at Deutsche Auto Parts, we're going to be going over how to install Bilstein coilovers on a Mark 7 GTI. To start, we're going to remove our driver's side wheel and we are using air. Keep in mind that if you are on jack stands, you want to make sure you crack all the bolts loose before you put your car up on jack stands. 17 millimeter socket on this. And it's always best to loosen in a star pattern. Now keep in mind, these are bolts, not studs. So when you take this last bolt off, it's going to drop, the wheel is gonna be drop off. So we actually have a stud tool you can thread in to make it easier. Uh, we'll put links to that as well in the, in the description. Once we've removed the wheel, we can start by removing the nut. It's an 18 millimeter that holds a sway bar link on. So we're gonna use air and just zip it off. Once we've loosened our sway bar, we can then get our triple square in. And all we're doing is we're gonna put it on the ratchet to hold it. And then we have an 18 millimeter on the other side and we're gonna loosen that. So as you see, we're loose and we can just slide our triple square bolt out. To get our sway bar link out, you may need to pull down on the sway bar and get that link out because it was cockeyed in there. All right, so here we are. We're gonna be opening this strut up with our strut spreader tool. If you take a look here, we'll have a link to this tool in the description below. So all we're going to do is insert that into the assembly here and you can take a look, put it in there, and then you take a ratchet, it's a 13 millimeter, and you can spread that open. Now what you're gonna do is, once you get it in there, you turn it, and you'll start to feel a tension, and then you keep turning, and at, at one point you'll feel it kind of flatten out, and as you see there, it kind of loose, it loosens up a little bit. Once it gets easier, you know you've hit the most tension point because it's kind of flat on the outer edges, so you know when you've hit that point. Here we are at our ball joint. We have 16 millimeters that hold it on. We're gonna remove that, and this will help us get some movement so we can get the shred assembly out. Now, once you take those nuts off, we can get a pry bar and this will help us get this assembly out of here. And now we're loose. Here we are at the inner axle on the driver's side. Now we are going to loosen our bolts. And once you loosen them, what we're gonna do is we have a long extension and our triple square, and then we use a flathead screwdriver in the rotor, in the fins of the rotor to turn it. That way you don't have to readjust everything every time you have to loosen one. Now, if you're using hand tools, what you can do is stick a screwdriver in the rotor to stop it from spinning while you're trying to crack these loose. And there we go. Okay, so here we are. We're gonna get ready to remove uh, the strut assembly from the knuckle. Now we've moved our strut spreader a little higher because the tab uh, that goes in between these two was blocking to the point where you couldn't even get it down very low. So we moved it very high to the very top and we're going to wiggle it. All you're gonna do is rock the top of the rotor and the bottom of the rotor vertically and it should slide the, down. Now keep in mind, as this goes down, you wanna make sure that you have and we're, we're actually stuck on the uh, pin now, tab now, so we're gonna take our spreader and move it down to the bottom.
All right. All right, so we're gonna be using a coat hanger that we have bent up to ensure that the spindle assembly doesn't fall. So we're gonna get it hooked on on this side to the subframe here and on the other side, and you can just run it through the other bolt hole over here. All right. And then we can continue to rock. Keep in mind when this thing hits the bottom, it's gonna be heavy, so. All right. And now we hook it on. So here we are, we're going to remove the seal and pull this clip off to access the 13 millimeter bolts that hold the top of the strut on. And if we take a look, we can just crack them loose. Now something to keep in mind when you are taking these out, once you get the last one out, the strut is gonna drop. So you wanna make sure you're holding the assembly at the bottom. Now it's good to push up with the strut while you're loosening. It'll make it easy to loosen these by hand. Now we have our last one coming out now. And we're out. All right, so an important note on this, on the strut top assembly, there's a little notch here, and then on two arrows on either side. You wanna make sure that this notch faces in towards the vehicle because the orientation of these is not, not a perfect triangle. If you try to do it in any other orientation, the holes won't line up. All right, so we start by threading in our 13 millimeters. Now we, we have Max helping us out by holding it from below you might need a friend to help just because it makes this process a heck of a lot easier you could do it by yourself but it would probably be a pretty good struggle and we have them all lined up and now all three are threaded in All right, now once you've tightened those down, you can then pop your cowl piece back in place. And once we get our clip out of here, pop your clip back on and then put your seal back in place. Now we're gonna put our ball joint in place here. Now we're gonna put our ball joint in place here and all we're gonna do is get those studs lined up and then you can kind of wiggle them in place. And then put your nuts on the bottom. Okay, and you're all set with those. 
Okay, so here we are, we're going to put the knuckle assembly back on the shock. Now, uh, because the coilovers are a lot shorter, you are gonna need to jack it up in some way. Now, if you're up in the air, you can use a bottle jack, or we're, in this case, we're using a floor jack because that's what most people are gonna use. So we're gonna actually remove our cable that was holding this in. That was just tensioned everything together. And what we're gonna do is use the floor jack to jack up the control arm and get this in place. So you wanna make sure you make that the, there's a guide that's lined up on the back side. Make sure that's there and we can continue to jack up a little. And make sure as you're jacking up that everything's, if you take a look, we have kind of a weird angle here. So we gotta make sure, there we go, that we get everything lined up and we can continue to go up. Now it's good to maybe wiggle it a little bit while it's jacked. And we're at a stopping point because I believe our strut spreader is probably blocking it. So we're gonna move that to a different place so that the pin the guide pin that's on the back of this can continue to move. As you can see with that tension, it continues to go up. So we continue to jack it. And once you get to a certain point, you'll see it stop. You can look in the back and see that on the back side of your knuckle that it's bottomed out. And once you get there, and you can check with your bolt, your triple square, slide it through, make sure it does. Once you do that, you know that it is where it needs to be. And you can take your spreader tool out, and you're all set there. All right, so when we tighten our ball joint, we uh, get them tightened up. Now we're gonna tighten our pinch bolt. And 18 millimeter, we have our triple square holding on the other side. All right, so now we're gonna put our inner axle bolts in. And keep in mind, you wanna make sure you have the plate already attached to it when you go in. And we're just gonna slide one of them in place. We have a long extension on our triple square and we're working from near the rotor. So we get our triple square kind of in place here. And what we're gonna do is kind of spin it until we get to a bolt hole and then thread our bolt in place. Now one thing that it's good to do, that I like to do, is get one of them threaded in, try to bottom it down towards the bottom, and then you can get the other one threaded in a lot easier once one of them is in there good. So. Um, Kind of make sure you push down on the cup to get it seated against the transmission as much as possible. And then the rest of them should thread in there pretty easily. Now what we, what I like to do is thread each one in and then we're gonna use air to tighten them up the rest of the way. And now we're all set. And here we are, we're gonna install our sway bar. Now you're gonna need to push down and then forward or towards the back of the vehicle to get the stud for the sway bar link in. And then you can kind of wiggle it in there, to get it in there. 
because it will be cockeyed a little bit and then we can tighten it down. Now one thing we want to mention is when we removed our knuckle assembly, we had to remove this electrical cable and from its place right here. So you want to make sure you remember to get that back in place. We removed it because we didn't want it to get uh, broken on the uh, by the weight of the caliper and carrier assembly. So let's pop that back in place. Here we are with the wheel off on the rear side. Now we're going to use our magnetic tray here and we're going to take the fender liner out. Now if you're doing springs you don't have to take this fender liner out but on this particular vehicle we're doing coilovers so this the bolts that hold this in are not easily accessible with this fender liner in. So we're going to take them out with our Torx T20. So here we are at the rear. We have the fender liner out and then we're going to loosen all of our uh, rear lower control arm bolts and then so we can remove our spring assembly. We have a uh, post jack underneath the control arm because it will uh, release as tension comes down. Uh, if you're using this at home, you might wanna use a floor jack instead. So here we go. And now we're going to loosen our 13 on the sway bar. And we're gonna pull those bolts out. May wanna wiggle a little bit to get these bolts out. And now we can lower down our jack. And now we're all the way down and slide this out of the way. And we can pull out our spring assembly. Once we've removed all of our lower assembly, everything is loose and we can take our shock out and just two 16 millimeters holding it in place. And then we can pull our shock out of the way. All right, here we are to remove our strut top assembly. We're gonna pop this cap off and we have a 16 that holds that on. And we can pull that assembly off. Now we can then mount the rear top assembly onto the new one. There is a bump stop inside here. We're gonna reuse that. If you're going to be going super low with the car, you're not gonna to wanna to use the same bump stop or maybe cut down the old bump stop, but we are not. So we're just going to reuse it. We're ready to reinstall. All right, now that we have our strut reassembled, we can get it mounted in place and thread our 16 millimeter screws in.
and then tighten them up. All right, so now, we're, now that we're ready to reinstall, pull our control arm down, and then we're gonna mount everything up. So once we get that in place, we can use our jack, go up slowly, and get everything in place. Now you wanna make sure you have everything assembled in this properly. Now one thing that's nice to note about Bilstein versus some other coilovers is the adjuster can fit on the top on this particular model. Now, some other cars, it has to go in the base here, which means it can't be adjusted once you're mounted on the car. So once we get everything in place where it looks like our holes are lined up, we can put our bolts in. Now we're lowering this down because getting the sway bar link in with it tensioned up is not going to work. So get that in. Now we're in on that side. And it looks like maybe just need to give it a little bit of a wiggle at the bottom here. Get a little pry with a screwdriver and you can get it through and in place. Put our nut on there. And now we can tighten everything up. All right, now all of our bolts are in and we're ready to tighten up. So one thing to note, the inside bolt on the shock is a longer bolt. So you wanna make sure it's uh, got enough of the nut to grab because if you put the, long, the wrong one in there, um, you'll see it's, it's kind of short. And then we'll tighten our 13 for the sway bar. And we're all set. All right, now we're gonna reinstall our fender liner. And one thing to note, it's easier to get it. There's a little ledge here that it has to kind of hook into, so it's best to get that in and then press the rest of it in place. That's a good idea before you start tightening anything to make sure that, each, that these bolt holes will line up with an actual hole instead of uh, just start tightening and then you realize you gotta take them all out and readjust.
and now we're all installed. The passenger side rear of the vehicle is the same as the driver's side with the exception of once you remove the fender liner and to remove the uh, strut assembly or shock assembly, you have to remove the EVAP canister. Now that all that is a 13 millimeter bolt and then there's a clip that holds it up top that needs to be uh, undone. And then this will be slid out of the way so you can access uh, this bolt here to remove the other side of this shock and then it'll all pull down. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and leave any questions, ideas, or feedback in the comments below.